On the 4th of May, Deloitte Chase Bank's auditors appeared before the National Assembly's Departmental Committee on Finance, Planning and Trade. Today it was the turn of the current and former directors of Chase Bank to appear before the same committee. And it was clear right at the onset that the 20-year relationship between Chase Bank and its auditors is one where they no longer see eye to eye. The Musharaka agreement for each of the SPVs clearly showed Chase Bank's 99% interest in the Musharaka assets. Deloitte's insistence on treating this as a normal loan or advance can only be labeled as professional ignorance at best. In any event, Deloitte's were wrong in their assessment that the SPV properties were not assets of the bank and that they should be treated as insider loans. Mr. Chairman, I'm still completely dumbfounded as to why, with one week to go to the publishing of Chase Bank 2015 accounts, Deloitte's had a completely different view on how to treat these Islamic investments. The Chase Bank officials revealed that the rain started beating the bank in late 2015, following the Central Bank of Kenya's action of putting Imperial Bank under receivership. This led to the precipitous slide of the volumes of deposits held by the bank. Prior to October 2015, Chase Bank's deposits stood at 114 billion and dropped steadily to 92 billion at the end of the year, at the end of 2015. By the time it was placed under receivership, the deposit base stood at 81 billion. According to Chase Bank's officials, the haste with which Deloitte handled the bank's financials means that the bank has no updated results. Chase Bank, therefore, as it stands, has no audited and signed financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2015. When the former chairman was asked whether he and the former managing director resigned from their posts on their own volition, he had this to say. No, sir, we did not. You didn't jump the ship, as they told. <laughs> no, not at all. You I'm still here, to, sir. You were told to, to resign. No, we were told to step aside, sir. On the figures of 3.1 billion shillings and 7.9 billion shillings that Deloitte alleged had been stolen and misappropriated respectively, Chase Bank had these responses. We went to the auditors and uh, explained to them that we had undertaken this exercise of verifying the interest receivable and we had come up with a figure of 3.1 billion, which we were not able to support and were seeking time to uh, verify this figure. simple solution was to transfer the shares of the SPV, namely the 99% uh, and the 1%, back to uh, the bank. The governor um, asked us to do that, and it was done within 24 hours, and 7.9 billion was back in the bank, having been accused of having stolen it. There was never any question in the, in the minds of the board that these assets did not belong to the bank. It was therefore very easy to give those assets back. Former chairman Zafrullah Khan was taken to task on the use of the billions of shillings invested through Musharaka agreements. The prudential guidelines say that you can only invest 25% of your capital. For this expansion, it would have exceeded the 25%. What better way to have brought this expansion where the management of the bank were in control in utilizing Islamic deposits towards bona fide bank utilizing the assets? When Chase Bank officials deemed that matters had become too sensitive for the public glare, they requested that the meeting be held in camera. Alex Mwangi, NTV.